Get tech tutorials and welcome to welcome back to beginning assembly language um, eighty eighty six IBM PC family. So uh, I have back open the test.asm and remember in order to get to where we are you need to type you go into DOSBox you type mount c colon I think it's forward slash um, eighty eighty six then you do uh, C colon and it goes to the colon drive and then type in edit. So if you if you don't remember that, actually let me just go ahead and show you. Let me go ahead and jump out. So I'm gonna save that. So there it is. There mount C eighty eighty six drive C is mounted. Then you do C colon edit and we're gonna go back into the edit and then you're gonna go file open. And go in here to down, click down on this guy, and go test ASM. Open that up, and now I have things indented here. So let me explain what is going on inside this setup here. Now you see three different things here, and also I wanted to add some quick things. Um, let's add here. Okay, so we have three different types of things going on here. As far as what the book calls it, and I, I'm probably going to correlate it directly to a high-level language. So in a high-level language, we have the identifiers here. So names that you could come up with whatever you want are these right here. So you could tell this whatever you want. You could tell this whatever you want. You could tell this whatever you want. Now... Those that's the uh, in this case in the book it calls it labels. I usually call them identifiers, similar to variables inside of a high-level language. And these are called operation codes. So everything that you see all the way down here. Now, uh, then these are comments. So in order to put a comment and have the assembler. Uh, MASM ignore it and uh, the macro assembler to ignore it you type in a semicolon just like how you end a high level language you do a semicolon and then you could do a comments so if you want to do similar to a high level language you could put a colon at the end of each of these and it probably won't have a problem with that okay and then uh, the operands or in this case I guess the calls or the parameters that you're sending to a certain thing are these right here so from here on is an operand this is an operand this is an operand this is an operand this is operand all these are operands these here are the operation codes or the operations and now there's this such thing called a boilerplate which is basically what you need on each um, uh, on each set I will I will uh, delete everything and show you what that is in a second and then I will just close it and not save it so we still have what we're looking at so uh, actually this is a different file come to think about it because it says Bill Jones here we're not gonna worry about that we're just gonna say Steven. okay all right now what we have here is there are three different areas so here we have our stack so this is our stack segment let's go ahead and indent that out so here's the stack segment here is the data segment and here is the code segment so the data is what type of data are you going to use um, so in this case the data segment is equal to the DS which is a data segment abbreviation there and then the stack segment, you're not going to worry about that. You're not going to worry about this top. You're just going to work about worry about the data and the code for right now. So those are the two different segments. So you put your you put your data in the data segment, and you put the code that you're going to use to manipulate the data inside the code segment. Now, let's go over a little bit of um, what's happening here. So as you see here in the move, this is a um, operand, and you have the different. Give me one second.
So here, how you read this is this is abbreviated, of course, move. So how it works in assembly is what's on the outside is moved to what's on the inside. So you could say this is move at data to AX, move AX to DS, move offset message to DX, and then this guy is displaying the string, and this is going to DOS, display the string, and this is returning a value, this is exiting DOS, and this is jumping back to DOS. So, okay. Um, I guess we'll go into the boilerplate, what we have for, and of course boilerplate's also very similar to what you see on HTML, it's the same in this case. Let me look for that in here. It's basically, where did it go? Okay, so this is all that you need. This is what you're gonna start out with. Um, so here, for example, you don't really need a data segment. So, I mean, you, you do need a data segment, but you could have nothing inside the data segment. So let's like, close this out here and then you're gonna have these these and then you're gonna close all this stuff and then let's go ahead and indent this guy out so that's what you're gonna need for each pro, uh, for every assembly program so for where for in the Pentium um, the data segment is not is not loaded. This data segment is not loaded to DS. So what they do is they indirectly load the data segment into the AX and then load the AX into the DS, into the data segment. So now you could use whatever you have inside the data segment. And this guy here could be whatever you want. So this could be like, you know, hey, except for I want to get it over there. Damn. Oh. So you could say whatever as long as this guy follows. And then I'll explain what this is here. So here we have um, the procedure. So it's saying that the name of the procedure is hey, and the procedure follows. So here's the procedure. And then here is the end of that procedure. Okay, the, the procedure is ending here. So equivalent to a high level language, it's a bracket, right? This is technic this is technically the the um you know int main or void main or whatever. That's what this is, and then there's a bracket here and a closed bracket here, and this is basically equal to that closing bracket. So that's what those are equal to. And then this guy right here is basically ending this program file and it says what program do you want to run first? I want to run the pro the procedure hey. So at the end of this file run hey. So you can run whatever procedure you want as long as you have uh, it here at the end. And that's uh, basically the boilerplate that you need to get any sort of um, anything to work. Now, let me see what else we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and say no, and then we're going to open it again. Test.asm. All right. So now what we have here is, what you're seeing here is that these are called registries and these are built into the processor architecture. They are hardwired in there, not technically software. We're using software to interface with the hardware. So here we have the AX and here we have the DX. And here we have the A high and this is A low. So basically there is um, up to Four, I believe, in this particular ar architecture, there's AX, DX, CX. Wait, AX, BX, CX, DX. And now each of those are 32-bit registries, I believe, or they're 16-bit registries, I think, or 16-bit. 
So you have 8-bit high and 8-bit low. So that's what the AH is. So technically, if I were to write it out, so AX is equal to, has an A high, which is the 8-bit original part. It should be 8-bit. Um, well, in this particular, it says here, there's also an e there's an extended eax which is a word and a word is um yeah so it's uh no double words 32 bit so yeah so it is 16 bit but each so, so an ax is 16 bit uh so you have the a high and then you have the a low and then you have the EAX, which is equal to the high part of the AX. So you have the first 16 bit, and then you have the other, uh, so it's the high word, and then you have the 16 bit low word. So basically, all you have to know is that you could work with just half of the registry, you could cut it in half. And you so that you don't overwrite over your top of each other, but you could only store eight bits of data inside a high and a low. We're not going to worry about e a x in this point. So here we have uh, a high and a low. So that's eight bit and eight bit, and we can store eight bits of data in each part, or we can store sixteen bit inside the whole a x registry. And then you have that's the low word, and then you have the possibility of the high word, which is the e a x. And that is, you can't store high and low in that. So I think for the EAX is you basically use EAX and you use up the A low, A high, and the high word. So you use up all of it. But we're not going to worry about EAX right now. We're only going to use AX, A high, and A low. And as you see here, we have A low here. We have A high here. Yeah. So that's explaining that. So as you also can see, there's more. There's the DX, and the DX has the same thing as D high, D, D low. Now, uh, there is. Okay, let me jump to the part that was explaining these, so I can explain it correctly. Okay. So this guy here, let me indent that out for you. So obviously these are needed for every program. This is part of the boilerplate. Like I said, it's moving the data into AX and then moving the data into the data segment. So you can use the data segment. Now, is moving the offset message into an open registry. In this case, we have an open registry in DX. We have not used it yet. And then we're, we're moving, we're telling it to uh, interrupt and I believe in order to do a um, all right, let me let me just indent this out for you. So it's indented there. All right. So if you ever want to output something to the DOS, uh, to in this case DOS box, um, display a string. This 9H is a hex call that displays the string. So that's display string. And there's also uh, 1H and 2H, which are we're going to go over later, which are other display hex um, identifiers. So we have you move offset message to DX, and you have to have the message inside DX to be able to display it on DOS. That's where DOS will read the value from. So then we basically we don't point the offset message to the DOS box. It, the DOS automatically reads whatever's inside DX. So obviously we need something inside there if it's going to display it. So here it just does the display string at A high, which is where DOS box is. And then we have an interrupt 21, which brings up the DOS and displays it. Now at the end also of every program, you have this exit type function. So move zero into A low, and then move zero, this is actually zero, you could do zero four CH or just four CH. So this is the return to DOS. So you do this guy move to A high, 
and you see A high is here as well so that's where DOS is located and this is similar to this but this call is the you know return and then you do interrupt 21H which calls the DOS box and then you're done so basically the only thing that's doing anything in this rather than the standard boilerplate is this guy here this is the only thing that's actually have anything to do with the program that we are in right now this is doing the most here it's moving this guy into the data into the top of the data into the whole data segment and then it's moving uh, it's giving the this like go print string call to the DOS box and then it's doing interrupt 21 call DOS box and that will show you that it is just printed something on there and that is a basic program alright so we're gonna continue uh, writing some more programs in the next tutorial and explaining things further and uh, sorry about being jumpy around here um, getting everything uh, trying to explain as much as possible and keep it under time and uh, trying to do as little jargon as possible if you want to get all the jargon you could pick up the book that's in the um, that's in the description otherwise I'm probably just going to teach you how to write it not necessarily you know um, this isn't this isn't like a class or anything you know I'm not going to teach you um, um, architecture right computer architecture or how to write or make your own processor and write the program for your own processor I'm just going to tell you you know how a low level language works what it would look like and what uh, Microsoft Assembly looks like. All right, so uh, this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and if you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it in this series and other series like it. If you have any questions, email me, and if you want to get more information, the book is inside the description that I'm using as a reference for this particular tutorial. And uh, yeah, so I will see you later, and I'll see you next video. Take it easy.